Welcome to another classic TFL off-road mashup and today we're going to see if 20 years of technology has changed the Jeep. Over there is a 2015 Jeep Wrangler and this is a 1995 20 years of difference Jeep YJ. You may know it as a Wrangler but in Canada where this was sold it was called a YJ. Now this one obviously is a little modified. It has a three and a half inch lift. It has big 33 inch tires. Under the hood is a straight six high output four liter that when it was new put out 190 horsepower and that well, I'll let Nathan explain. absolutely no way anywhere that this is going to lose to that. Look, aside from the fact that it has modern suspension coil springs and a modern V6 that puts out 285 horsepower, far more than that, it also has a much beefier everything. So what we're going to find out next is whether or not that vehicle, which was built 20 years ago, can take on this one, which was built very recently, and I can guarantee you what the results are going to be. Nathan, it's remarkable how similar these two Jeeps are, even though 20 years separates them. I mean, just check it out. We both have Dana's. All right, yours are beefier. Yeah. <laughs> we both have, look at these hooks, they're the same. Uh, no, no, they're really not, actually. Okay, keep going. No, what else is the same? Uh, we both have a seven slot grill. That's stunning, keep going. <laughs> we both have disc brakes. Uh, no, you have rear drums. All right. I have four-wheel discs. We both have great suspension. No, you don't. You have leaf springs, which really date back to the Old West, and this has coil springs all the way around. Not to mention the fact that it has a disconnecting front. We won't even go there right now. What else do you have? I have four-wheel drive. Oh, you have four-wheel drive. Open diffs. I have lockers, baby. What else? Oh, look at this, man. I have square headlights, and you know square <laughs> headlights are where it's at. Which, when they came out, I believe people were burning the Jeep effigy in lawns of uh, AMC who built this. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't built by the Italians. <laughs> oh, you're going to go there. Okay. I'm going to go there, man. I'm oh, going, I've gone there. <laughs> there is no way. In, okay. You do have larger tires. I do. They're, they're, they're really, be, yeah, 33s. Okay. <laughs> These BFGs are actually built for off-roading. Those things look like they're built for sand. Uh, there's no tires. <laughs> <laughs> that they are. All right. Well, we're not going to settle this arguing. Let's go take it down our new dead end trail, the one that we used recently for the Raptor versus Jeep comparison, and see how the old technology does lifted and modified versus the new out of the box factory tech. It's not even going to be a contest. Andre, get a little bit more this way. There you go. Bonjour, Andre. And away we go. Now that I'm not in, within earshot of Roman, I will say this. When I was in high school, and that Sahara, actually one identical to it, except for you know, factory wheels and whatnot, came out. I had money saved, I was working some odd jobs and for my uncle at his wrecking yard and I worked double hard because I really, really wanted to buy. It was the first new vehicle I wanted to buy, ever. And my old man said, no Jeeps flip all the time and you know, I'm not going to help you, I'm not going to allow it to happen, blah, 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 blah. And I tried to explain to him, it's wider than the CJ5 and it's safer. And that's exactly how they built it, to be a safer vehicle. So yeah. <laughs> That was one thing. Fast forward to 2015. It dawns on me that back then when I would tell him it was safer and he would deny that it was, um, he never, <laughs> I never thought of the future. This has airbags. This has anti-lock. This has four wheel disc brakes, traction control. It is a much safer technologically advanced vehicle. All right, so I'm gonna put it in four low. There we go. I'll let the Jeep do the braking for me. It's old school hill descent control. Think of it that way. 
All right, here we go. It's gonna get a little tricky now. Oh, this is a little tricky here. <laughs> it's a bit of a mud. It's a bit of a mud pit right now. Uh, all right, here we go. I think going down through it will be okay. Getting out of it, not so easy. So far, keep the momentum going. Look at that. Look at that. And I'm stuck. Let me back up. Got a little bit of a running start at it. No problem. Here we go, right through it. See how Nathan does. Ooh, I'm actually scraping a little bit on the uh, plant life underneath me, and he wasn't. His lift, I think, gets him at least another inch clearance. It's no big deal. I have armor underneath. There are a couple of things that really set this apart from that. Such an antique. Um, one of the things is the fact that I can easily go down to low gearing. I can lock the front and rear. I can disconnect the front sway bar. He has open diffs. Now, as, as awesome as this thing is, and I, this Jeep Wrangler really is one of the best ones ever made for off-roading. And it's kind of dummy proof. Obviously it is because I'm able to use it. Um, with that being said, and considering how superior this is, I think I might actually have a better time driving that old thing. The open diffs, it's a challenge, you know? I mean, you're, <laughs> you're not getting traction out of both wheels at the same time when you need it. Um, you're, you have to really think your way through things. And I've seen guys do amazing things with just the very bare bones, basic Jeep. Here we go, it's gonna get a little ugly here. <laughs> or a lot ugly, actually. And you know what? There's trees scraping the side of this Jeep. It doesn't matter. It's a 1995 YJ. A little bit of scraping, no big whoop. I can hear Roman chattering, even at this distance, with the in-car cam, talking about how great his ride is. As I said, I actually want to drive it because I see it as a challenge. You guys who say that a Honda Accord could make it here, well, just wait till the end of this video. I've got something to show you. There are a couple other benefits. For one thing, there is over a thousand pounds difference between the two vehicles. So he has a shorter wheelbase. He has much, much less weight. Now, both of these Jeeps were kind of the top of their line when they were made. Nathan's, of course, being a few months ago. Uh, that is the Rubicon uh, Ruby, for all you Jeep lovers out there, Hard Rock, uh, which is the top of the line uh, Jeep that you can buy right now. And this is the Sahara, which at that time was pretty much the top of the line. So I had all the nice goodies, which is mainly a cosmetic package, but these really cool seats. Oh boy, he just really went in. And I'm gonna need a lot of torque to get through this, so. I'm just going to have to really work this, and hopefully I'll be able to get through here. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on! And, you know, with all that, he's able to dart around and move around much easier than I am. This is a much more, uh, this is a lumbering vehicle compared to that one. And that's huge. The ability to maneuver, don't take that for granted. Now, at the same time, after I've said that, <laughs> if I had a Suzuki Samurai properly set up, I'd be able to outmaneuver him. So, you know, it's sort of relative. I was really hoping that at some point, Roman would go through some mud puddle and the mud chunks would come flying in and hit him right in the hair. Uh-oh. 
didn't get enough momentum there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. $5,000 Jeep. No problem. You know, this, this air conditioner works great. Hey, Nathan, you were dragging this pointy stick. Might have to do with your ground clearance. Uh, you know what? I got that for you, yeah, considering your age and everything else. Oh, thanks. Yeah, All yeah, right. so there you go. Oh, I appreciate you, you that. You might need to dig out your uh, vehicle at some point in time. That might help. All right, well, that was uh, easy going down. But now the question, of course, is let's turn around and go back up. <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, I'll go first, because if I get stuck, you can push me up. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling I'll be doing a lot of pushing. Actually, you should probably go first, because if I get stuck... Then I'll pull you up? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you you're not going to push me up. So why don't you go first, and I'll follow you this I time. will happily go first. All right. Yeah. So Roman's turning around. And once again, I mean, the turning radius on that Jeep is fantastic. It's so much better than this one. I just hope he doesn't get stuck just trying to turn around. <laughs> well, he absolutely has the wrong tires, just, just to start from there. The right tires can get you over so much. Most of this downhill... He could have probably done in two-wheel drive. But with those tires getting out of the gully, I don't think you would have been able to make it. I honestly don't. <laughs> that was the deepest rut. The, it did bottom out a little bit, but you know, with the sliders and everything else and the armor underneath, it's not a big deal. But that's the price you pay for going for the unlimited. It, you know, the breakover angle is obviously much more <laughs> exaggerated over the short wheelbase regular Jeep Wrangler. Sort of stuck. I just need to get a little bit of momentum. Here we go. Momentum it is. Man, I have no traction. This is no traction whatsoever. Okay, one more time. Here we go. One more time. Here we go. Come on. Just all about I've got a big butt pit now, and I'm gonna get stuck in this thing unless I have a lot of speed. So here we hold go. On, hold on. I think I'm gonna get stuck in this, Andre. See, I'm calm, cool, and collected. He's gonna be an absolute bundle of nerves. No matter how he comes off on video, trust me, guys, this is going to fray his nerves big time. He likes being in control. This is the right vehicle for him. He loves his Ford Raptor. Why? Because it doesn't get stuck and, and if it does it's something stupid that we've done i'm gonna do my best here we go I saw you made it through. Yeah, that was that was great. You a bundle of nerves? Yeah, and I got, uh, I got dirt in my ears. Yes, yes, okay, <laughs> victory. Now on top of all that, I mean, look, I actually really admire the fact that you were able to take an open diff car with, 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 with tires. Open diff Jeep. But it's still, it's a car with those tires on. Oh. You took every Jeep thing out of there and it still made it, which is impressive. 
I mean, I had. I sweated a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I relaxed and I was completely at ease. By the way, these seats are heated. I didn't know if I told you that. (laughs) Air conditioning works really good. Yeah. And I'm wondering. I have air conditioning. You do? Yeah, Yeah. kind of. And um, I'm wondering do you need a tow out of here because you're out of gas? (laughs) <laughs> it is a little bit thirsty, I'll give you that. <laughs> a lot of thirsty with that three-speed automatic. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. but you know, I mean, it's really impressive what an old Jeep Wrangler can do in these parts. It's impressive considering that the tires had absolutely no bite in them. And that's impressive given the fact that this thing absolutely didn't sweat once doing anything. So whenever we do these off-road things, there's always somebody that types, you know, these trails an Accord can do, right? My Accord could go up that trail. could totally go down yeah, that trail. Yeah, so let's see how well that Accord is doing down this trail. Not so good. Look, he's backing up. I wonder why he's backing up, Nathan. I wonder why he's backing up, huh? <laughs> well, at least we didn't have to fish him out. Yeah, at least we didn't have to go tow him out of there. So, no, an Accord will not do it, as you can see. Wow, Nathan, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> but I'm still sweating. Yeah, I bet you are. But you know what? This is the bottom line. From the original Jeep Wrangler to this new Jeep Wrangler, really well-made vehicles, despite the fact you had tires that were not supposed to go off-road and open diffs. I was bouncing around like a beach buggy. <laughs> Four words, dude. It's a Jeep thing. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching and check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews. And check this out, more Wranglers. Look at that. Hey, dude. Hey, guys. It's like a Wrangler uh, test. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's a Jeep thing. See you guys next time. Ciao. I don't have lockers. I don't have disconnectable sway bars, but I do have a low gear, which lets me crawl, and hopefully that will help. That puts a lot of torque into the wheels, which is really what we need to go up this hill. We need a lot of torque. All right, I hope Nathan will not have to pull me up this because uh, that would be embarrassing. (laughs) But I'm gonna trust the old 190 horsepower, high output HO, straight six. You know, this uh, engine was in a lot of vehicles, including the XJ, which is what today is known as the uh, Cherokee for most of you guys. And that was a really popular vehicle. So they made a lot of these engines. And the great thing about this engine is that it's fuel injected. When you get up here at about 8,000 feet above sea level, the fuel injection really helps. Because uh, I've had a dirt bike up here that's been carbureted. And boy, it starves for air. I'm bouncing around a little bit. Nathan seems to be doing okay. I'm just keeping the momentum going, hoping that uh, this old technology will prove just as good and just as reliable as the new stuff. And man, that torque is just working this, working this Jeep. But no problem, no problem at all. Ha ha ha!